Hi folks and welcome back for another video and today we've got another project completed on the uh, bench which I have labelled as my steampunk superhead and the reason why it's called that is because it looks quite freaky but I'll show you that in a minute we've got lots of uh, lights and things which um, make it look quite cool anyway so this superhead uh, I've, I'm sort of uh, continuing the theme with receivers at the moment. Uh, I've got a load of IF coils which uh, I found and which I want to uh, use in various projects. Uh, so uh, hence the reason for this little splurge on superheads. But but anyway, uh, this is the latest creation. And what it is, is um, a short wave, medium wave and long wave uh, superhead. Although it doesn't work terribly well in long wave. Um, but anyway, uh, there's a few bits and bobs here which... Uh, which I had lying around the shack which I wanted to use and so I decided to make it into this. Anyway, it uh, I've got it on at the moment. It does seem to work alright. Got it tuned to talk sports at the moment. I'm a bit wary of tuning it into music stations because because I'll probably get a YouTube copyright strike as soon as I uh, hear any uh, uh, as soon as they hear any um, music even though uh, it does pick up quite a few uh, music stations uh, uh, on medium wave at the moment anyway so let's have a quick closer look at it because and uh, what are some of the little features I've done on this so the inspiration for this superhead uh, basically came from this uh, coil pack uh, which is called an Osmore coil or an Osmore Q coil pack and I've never seen these before actually, I found this on eBay as mentioned and what it is is a series of coils made up to cover three bands on the medium wave, long wave and some of the short wave bands uh, and the coils are basically pre-wound and they uh, include the local oscillator coil and the aerial coil and I thought to myself, well, if I get one of these, and it wasn't that wasn't terribly expensive, it would save me a lot of the work in uh, making up coils. And I think this, if you look at the box, it the box looks quite old, and I believe this is probably from the 1960s, I would imagine, or possibly early 70s. And it's quite a nifty little thing, actually. So I think these were manufactured to try and encourage or basically manufactured for the benefit of uh, electronic enthusiasts, radio enthusiasts, radio amateurs to build uh, uh, well broadcast uh, receivers uh, using valves and uh, this would sort of take away a lot of the uh, the effort and make things like a lot easier and this is it's almost like a kit except it's, there's obviously quite a few components you need to source it even comes with a quite a nice circuit diagram or suggested circuit diagram for the Osmore 5 valve superhead radio and the instructions are very clear I mean you can see on this circuit diagram if I can just get my screwdriver I mean you can see you know these points are clearly labelled here for where you connect the coil it suggests you know what sort of valves to use in this case a 6k 8g for the local oscillator and the um, mixer and a 6k 7g which are quite common tubes back in the day uh, for the IF amplifier and uh, that's the detector 6q 7g and 6v6 bog standard audio amp so you know you could build this you just have to source the IF transformers and the valves and obviously the rest of it and using this coil pack uh, you could build up a receiver so that's basically what I've done with this uh, I'm not using the valves they suggested though I'm using sort of uh, miniature uh, valves um, and uh, slightly different layout but more or less well certainly the front end is going to be the uh, pretty much the same as what they've got here so there we are 
that's um, that's the core of the whole uh, project, and we'll show you the rest of it. So here it is, a little bit uh, closer, and as you can see, we've got a few interesting things here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out is this lovely dial, which I think it was made by Ediston. And I had that tuning dial uh, lying around, which I thought I would use. And uh, I think it produces quite a nice uh, touch. And we've got a few neons uh, backlighting this, the, uh, the tuning dial. And the other thing you'll notice as well is the magic eye, which, if I turn the gain up, right now, speed, you can see that working quite nicely. That magic eye, actually, normally with magic eyes, they're supposed to connect to the AGC, but my AGC voltage on this is automatic gain control, for those who are not quite familiar with the uh, um, terms. Uh, wasn't particularly high, so I've actually rigged that up to the output stage of this um, this receiver. Anyway, let's have a quick look. So what I've got here to make it look really interesting, we have a Perspex box for it, and this one I just made up myself. Just cut out some Perspex and glued it all together with super glue, and it's surprisingly strong actually. So we've got a number of valves down there, which hopefully you can see. And the valve lineup on this receiver, we have a 6 uh, EA8, which is our local oscillator and our mixer. And we have two EF89s for the EF, uh, IF amplifier stages 6AL5 which is this one here if you can just that one there is our 6AL5 and we also have finally for the audio valve an ECL82 we've got a couple of transformers there so what I've done with this to make it look sort of interesting because after all a lot of these valve receivers, you never see the valves and you want to show them off because they look quite good, nice and glowing. And I will, I'll, I'll take a quick shot of this with the lights out and you can see it actually looks quite cool. Anyway, so we've got a bit of a blue glow here and you can see that, I suppose on camera it's going to look quite bigger than what, or quite brighter than what uh, one would normally expect, but anyway. I've got some LEDs under the chassis which sort of illuminate the perspex and give it sort of a bit of a blue tint. And it sort of gives it quite an interesting effect. So this this radio actually works pretty good, but you do need a long aerial for it. Um, in retrospect, uh, probably should have made a few changes. Probably could have done with a separate pre-selector RF stage because at the moment the uh, the aerial goes um, pretty well much into the uh, into the mixer. Uh, I mean, there's tuned circuits there which um, are from the Osmol coil pack, but essentially it, it it more or less goes straight into the mixer without having an RF stage. So it works works okay as long as you've got a a big aerial. Anyway, let's um let's tune around see if we can find anything. As I said, I have to be quite. I think, I think if we go this way, we're less likely to come to music stations. Having said that, probably ought to go the other way. This is what live video is all about. It's that's only music station there. That's probably. The UK is 
I think that's absolute radio. So the there is a small speaker underneath, which I'll show you when we turn the thing over. But I find that it works better plugged into the external speaker. And I've got uh, quite a big speaker in that uh, old radio box there, and uh, it works uh, works pretty much okay. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll quickly turn it over so you can have a look at the in underneath and then we will just show you what it looks like when the lights are down because that's when it really looks quite quite good. This is just a quick uh, <clears throat> quick shot of what I've done underneath with this receiver. I mean it's there's, it's all, um, I know it's a bit of a cliche but it's all quite standard really. Uh, just a few things to point out. Um, so the uh, Osmo coil unit, I've tried to uh, put a bit of screening on for that, uh, sort of best practice uh, for the uh, local oscillator and the uh, um, pre-selector coils. And the rest of it really is just um, it's just the usual, you know, tag strip and uh, um, soldered, you know, uh, on from the valve bases directly, uh, or you know, all the components. What I've done differently on this one, which I didn't do on my previous uh, superhead, I've I've put a uh, a bus bar. I've heard rumours, um, and it's probably uh, true that you know you should try and bring all the earth connections to the one point, especially with the IF transformers. I think that probably does. Reduce the instability, especially you know if you're couple your de your decoupling capacitors and things like that. Uh, whether whether it makes a difference, uh, I don't know, but uh, I guess that certainly for the audio section it would make a bit of a difference. So that's what I've done. Apart from that, it's just the usual, you know, point to point uh, construction. Uh, I've got the power supply down there in the corner. Uh, use semiconductor diodes this time. Um, no choke, 100 micro, microfarad uh, capacitor, and that's all. I think uh, I think chokes in these sort of receivers are probably, um, I think they're a bit overrated, really. That's my own personal view. I think if you're going for semiconductor diodes, which can usually withstand the initial surge when you turn them when you turn the the uh, receiver on, uh, you're probably all right. You probably don't need a choke. I mean, one of the reasons why you have to put a choke filter in. Um, is because you know if you're using a vacuum tube rectifier uh the vacuum tube rectifiers can't handle as much current as uh normal semiconductor diodes so when you get that initial surge uh i've had problems with uh, rectifying tubes in the past where i've had to, where i've put too much capacitance in the filter uh so with uh, with a choke that obviously helps with all that uh, so if you're just using semiconductor diodes and you use a big capacitor I think you probably you don't really need a choke that's my own personal opinion I've never really found them uh, you know in that sort of situation where they're really that necessary anyway so that's the bottom uh, little speaker there in the corner um, got provision for an external speaker as well uh, other than that, uh, it's pretty standard. So, here it is. I've just turned the lights down and you can hopefully appreciate the, uh, the various lighting arrangement I've got on it. And it looks really good actually, I dare I say so myself. I'll just turn it up a little bit. We are celebrating is months and months and months later. Meanwhile, the European Court of Human Rights has told Russia to block the execution of two Britons captured while fighting for Ukraine. It's all doom and gloom on the news these days. Ukraine sentenced Sean Pinner and Aidan Aslan to death earlier this month. And 15 people have been arrested in France. on test rolls available. Just text apply to 60060 or visit quickfit.com forward slash careers. The shower should be dying out during the evening for most, but remaining heavy in the northeast and southern Scotland. Force, 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 
We'll start in Wimbledon, where home hopeful Jack Draper is a set-up against Alex De Minor on court one. Rafa Nadal and Coco Goff are also in action. Talk Sports' Lisa O'Sullivan has the latest. And Coco Goff will be ready to come on court very shortly because at last Rafa Nadal has sealed the win over Ricardo Barankis of Lithuania 6-4, 6-4, 4-6, 6-4. Okay, folks, so I hope you enjoyed that, and <clears throat> it was quite fun to build this uh, uh, funky super hat, and uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy using it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and catch you again soon.